Hello and welcome back. In this series we're building up a 1-bit computer out of vacuum tubes that I've been dubbing the UE14500. It's a, kind of a, a mouthful of a name, but we're paying homage to the chip that we're kind of basing the entire design around, which is the uh, Motorola MC14500. Uh, but the reason I've been dubbing it the UE14500 is because we've made a couple design changes. The most important of which is that we've changed the logic unit to an arithmetic logic unit, from an LU to an ALU. And the biggest difference between these two is that an ALU can do math. So that means that we need a full adder. In the previous episodes, we built an exclusive OR unit as a input for our ALU to allow us to do subtraction by essentially doing more addition. Uh, but we need to build the part that does the actual addition. So that's what we're going to do today. We're going to build a full adder. Now building a full adder is not unfamiliar on this channel. We've actually done it in a previous episode, but this is the actual full adder that we're going to use in the machine. So I'm pretty excited about that. We're building more finalized components for the actual processor. So let's hop over to the bench, take a look at how we're going to build this full adder, and then we'll fire up the mill, cut out some circuit boards, and give it a test at the end. Before we jump straight into just uh, building the full adder, let's take a step back and take a look at what we're trying to accomplish with a full adder. And uh, actually, I think it'll be easier if we go one step further back and take a look at what a half adder is. A half adder takes two one-bit inputs, adds them together, and gives us a two-bit output. So zero plus zero is obviously zero, zero. Uh, 0 plus 1 is 0, 1, 1 plus 0 is also 0, 1, and then finally 1 plus 1 is 1, 0. So in order to build a half adder that gives us this functionality, it's really simple. We can just do an exclusive OR gate and an AND gate. But if we remember, building an exclusive OR gate actually uh, took quite a bit of effort, and building an AND gate also takes quite a bit of effort. So my next idea was to build the entire thing out of NOR gates. And uh, NOR gate is a universal gate, so you can uh, build an exclusive OR gate out of NOR gates, and you can build an AND gate out of NOR gates. And that's what's shown here, but you can see that uh, <laughs> it gets a little wild. <laughs> But there's absolutely no reason for us to replicate an exclusive OR gate with just NOR gates uh, and to replicate an AND gate with just NOR gates. I mean, we've proven that there's better ways of doing this, but also if you just get on Google and you search for all NOR half adder, you get a really nice design. And so that's what this design is. So you can see that it cuts our number of NOR gates down quite a lot. We're down to five NOR gates now. But Looking at it, the three NOR gates in the center look pretty familiar. The way that those three NOR gates are arranged is essentially building an AND gate. So we can actually rewrite this a little simpler as two NOR gates and an AND gate like this. And while we can't build an AND gate directly, we can build a NAND gate directly. We've done that in previous episodes. And then all we need is an inverter. So we can build a half adder using four logic gates laid out just like this. Two NOR gates, a NAND gate, and an inverter. And that seems really simple. And you guys know me, I like to give things a test on the breadboard first. So I have built this up on the breadboard. Let's pull that out and give it a quick test. All right, so we've got our half adder set up on the breadboard here. And if you're curious about how to build up a half adder with tubes on a breadboard, pretty much exactly like this, I've put a link in the description to the previous video where we build up a half adder. Uh, and it's pretty much identical to this one. But in that video, I go into a lot more detail about uh, how and where I set up all of the resistors and diodes and run the jumpers to get it done. But uh, essentially, we have our two inputs here, A and B. Um, and then we have a NOR gate, a NAND gate, an inverter, and then our final NOR gate over here. And then our two LEDs here represent our sum and our carry out. So if I push one button, our sum should turn on. Yeah, there we go. We can see a little red LED came on. If I push the other button, our sum should turn on. There we go. The same red LED came on. And that's important to note. It doesn't matter which button I push, the sum LED comes on. Now, if I push both buttons, 
Yeah, there we go. Our carry out LED came on. So this is uh, working exactly like we want it to as a half adder. Yeah, so that's awesome. Our little breadboard half adder here seems to be working perfectly. And I think this is going to be uh, an excellent design choice for the full adder that we ultimately have to build. And so let's try to figure out how we're going to take this half adder design and expand that out into a full adder. All right, a little breadboard half adder worked out really great. I'm really happy with that. And I think that's the design that we're gonna end up running with. Uh, and in order to make a full adder from a half adder, well, all we really need to do is just double the half adder. I think that's uh, fairly obvious given the name half and full. <laughs> Um, but a full adder is essentially just two half adders with an additional OR gate here. Now the added functionality that you get from a full adder as opposed to a half adder is that a full adder now has three one-bit inputs to give us a two-bit output. And it's important to note that it doesn't matter which input is turning on, our output will be the same. So if any single input, A, B, or C, is one, our sum will be one and our carry out will be zero. If any two inputs are one, our sum will now be zero and our carry out will be one. And then finally, if all three inputs are one, our sum will be one and our carry out will be one. And the benefit of this is that input C can actually be the carry out from a previous adder stage. So you can actually stack up one bit full adders to have a two bit full adder or a four bit full adder or however many you wanna stack up. In our case, we're using this in more of a serial manner. So we'll do uh, math on two bits and if we have a carry out, we store that in a temporary location and then we do math on the next two bits also using the carry out that was stored during the previous operation. So in this way we can have a one bit full adder but we can do math on much longer numbers like an eight bit number. So we're gonna go ahead and build this up and this is the schematic that we're going to follow. Uh, and I should say that I tried to stuff the schematic onto a single piece of paper but it came out looking like a jumbled mess of lines. Uh, but most importantly we know how to build NOR gates we know how to build NAND gates, and we know how to build inverters. Instead of looking at the schematic, all we really have to do is just plug those building blocks into our logic diagram, because I think that's a little easier to read. I came up with a design that I'm pretty happy with. I managed to stuff it on a single 150 by 100 millimeter board. Uh, that's the size of single-sided PCBs that I've been using to build pretty much everything on. Uh, and I just barely got all eight vacuum tubes stuffed on there. And so I think it's gonna work all right. So let's hop out to the garage, fire up the mill, and uh, see if we can make this board work. And here it is. And man, I think it just turned out absolutely stunning looking. I love the eight tubes on a single board like this. And it just, I think it looks really great. So now all that's left is to test it out. And so I was thinking, you know, we can maybe use some LEDs like we did with the half adder to give it a test. Uh, but that just doesn't feel quite right. Uh, I think it would be a lot more fun to test this out with an indicator that's a little more period correct, even though there's a lot about this uh, whole build that's not exactly period correct. 
So we'll get rid of the LEDs and I pulled out my little box of old Russian VFDs here. And so if we crack that open, um, well, we got a couple options in here. Um, we've got these really cool uh, seven dot uh, VFDs that we can use for different things, but um, you know, that's kind of overkill for what we're trying to do. Uh, the most obvious choice are these little um, DM160 style uh, single VFDs. And these are what we are using for indicators on the actual build. And so, uh, yeah, we, we might go with those, but wait, wait, well, hang on a sec. We've got these really cool looking seven segment display VFDs in here. And you know, I haven't used these for anything in a very long time because, well, seven segments is difficult to deal with, uh, but uh, you know what? Let's let's give one of these a shot. Let's let's see if we can't get one of these uh, seven segment VFDs to uh, display something. All right. So as as cool as the idea of using this little seven segment VFD sounded, uh, it <laughs> it wasn't easy. <laughs> Uh, so we ended up with uh, all of this extra stuff on the front. The full ladder itself is actually just sitting in the back here and it's connected up to the rest of the breadboard through these jumper wires that we see here. These three gray ones here are for the three inputs and then the orange and purple one here are the outputs. And then we have uh, five additional tubes up here all to make our little VFD work. Uh, so I'll go ahead and demonstrate this right quick and then I'll go into a little more explanation about what exactly was entailed with getting it to do what it's going to do. So right now all three of our inputs are off which means that our output is going to be zero zero which is zero and you can see our VFD here is displaying zero. Awesome. If I push just one of these buttons that'll be one plus zero plus zero which means that our output will be zero one which is equal to one. So let's just push one of those buttons. Yeah, there we go. All right, you can see that no matter which button I push, we get one displayed on the VFD here. Now, if I push any two buttons, our output will then be one zero, which is two in binary. So if I push two buttons, yeah, <laughs> yes, it worked. I was a little nervous. I was afraid it wouldn't work correctly. <laughs> Uh, but it worked. So you can see that we have two written on the seven segment VFD. If I push these two buttons or if I push these two buttons, we always get two. And finally, if I push all three buttons, our output becomes one, one, which should be three. So let's give that a shot. Yeah, look at that. Three displayed on our VFD here. How cool is that? So this is actually working perfectly, but in order to get here was not an easy journey. Trying to convert binary, which is base two, into either decimal, which is base 10, or hexadecimal, which is base 16, is very, very difficult. However, since we were only dealing with two digits, we only needed to do zero, one, two, and three which made life a little bit easier. So I started by charting out which segments of our seven segment display would be illuminated based upon the incoming binary. And so you can see, for example, uh, zero, zero would illuminate segments A, B, C, D, E, and F, or binary one, one would illuminate segment A, B, C, D, and G. And so based off of this table, I started coming up with a, a logic diagram to essentially get that done. And it looks really simple here, but uh, actualizing this required a, a little more effort. <laughs> uh, you can see that we have two inverters, a NOR gate, and then two OR gates. And so if we look at our breadboard here, uh, we can see that we have our two inverters here. This third tube over here is a NOR gate, and then we have our two OR gates over here built out of diodes. But the eagle-eyed viewers may notice that there are two additional vacuum tubes back here. And what those are are cathode follower buffers for the output from our full adder back here. And I actually uh, first built this without those cathode follower buffers and it, it just it wouldn't work at all. There were too many elements hooked up to the outputs of the full adder which uh, caused them to essentially be pulled too low and then the whole thing fell apart. So I had to buffer those outputs to make them strong enough to handle all of the logic that they needed to handle. I'm sure that this seems like a wild tangent for me to be running down and spending a lot of effort on, uh, especially since we were just trying to build a full adder. And I assure you 100% it is absolutely a totally unnecessary tangent. <laughs> 
but there's a couple reasons why I did this. The first is that, one, it's just really, really cool. Uh, but the second is that I'm starting to think about the future direction of the computer. What we're building now is really just the processor. There is no memory, there is no program control, and there's no input or output. And so I'm starting to think about those remaining three pieces. And I've got lots of little circuits that I've been working on for both the memory as well as program control, uh, but I haven't actually done anything for input output yet. So I figured this would be an excellent time to maybe start playing with building proof of concepts for trying to build a readable output for the machine. And readable means that we're gonna need some uh, hexadecimal displays. And so this was kind of my first foray into that. And I figured I'd take you guys along for the journey. Now, of course, this is only two bits, and ultimately I'm going to be dealing with either four bits or eight bits, uh, which means that we have a much larger hurdle to tackle. And actually doing it with a combinational logic like we did here, uh, I think it's just going to be totally impractical. Uh, but there's other ways to tackle this problem of decoding four bits of binary into a uh, hexadecimal. And I think the most viable one is going to be using a decoder with a diode ROM. And with that, I think I can get about 16 tubes for four bits or one hexadecimal digit, which I think is actually really, really manageable. Um, it's gonna take a lot of diodes, like over a hundred diodes, uh, but diodes are cheap and tubes aren't. So that is uh, an avenue that I think I'm going to explore in the future, but we have gone well and truly off of the rails here. So to get back on topic, we now have our full adder for the actual machine complete. This is awesome, but there's nothing to actually plug it into yet on the actual processor itself. So in the meantime, I'm going to hop back on the computer, get to designing more boards, start getting those cut out. And I want to thank you all so much for watching, and I hope to see you in the next episode.